Hey, hey, everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel with me, Chun Chaskin. I've got a bit of a different episode for you guys today, something a little unorthodox and new. Hopefully you guys will all enjoy. I was approached by a very awesome individual about doing some narration and some editing for a potential audiobook for a book of theirs that they have uh, online. So me and a few other people have done narration and voice acting for this and I've compiled it all together for you guys to enjoy. This episode will be the prologue as well as chapters one and two with potentially the rest of the series coming to you guys in the future. Without further ado, here we go with the episode. I hope you guys enjoy. Prologue. There were two super kingdoms within an ancient island called Alkira and Siru Kata. Alkira is a kingdom that is controlled by noble thieves that only steal and find resources to maintain the survival and stability of their land and people. Due to very bad and limited resources in their controlled area. Siru Kana is a kingdom that is controlled by brave royal knights that are overly protective of their land, resources, and people from outside the kingdom by any means necessary. One day, the conflict would erupt between the two superpower nations which sparked a two-generation long conflict that would involve every part of the island being caught in the crossfire. All of this was because of the murder of the previous king of Sirukana, Kanbra's father, by an unknown figure due to his paranoia in making enemies with other small nations, and Kanbra's sister, which later led to the death of the king of Alkira, Samuel Wickram's wife, being murdered by the Sirukana loyalist believing that the Alkira were responsible for the attack on their nation. The conflict continued, until one day the Republic of G was dragged into the madness of the war. A young mage from the Republic of G was drafted into the fight, due to their advanced magic in healing and death bring abilities. Now, the young mage has to decide the fate of their land on which kingdom to become allies within a civil conflict of graying morality. What will become the fate of the island, and which path will the mage walk in this conflict? Find out in Thados and the Ember Knights, Land War of Two Kingdoms. Chapter 1. A Young Mage's Start Days before the Republic of G was dragged into the war, the citizens of G went about their lives as normal. At the front of the Holy Temple, a hooded figure is walking out through a crowd of people, leaving after the service of the temple was finished, to the local market square area of town, to meet up with an old friend awaiting their arrival. The hooded figure meets up at the back of one of the stores in the market and knocks on the door. Hey, it's me, Fedos. Open up, Sean. Are you there? Asked the hooded figure as they knocked on the door of the store. The door then opens up with the shop owner, Sharon, an attractive six feet tall woman with white brownish hair with freckles and a red robe. Faye, what are you doing here? I thought that you would be busy at the church today. Also, don't you have a royal meeting with your big brother, the governor of G? Sharon asked her friend. Eh? We finished our service early, and oh, I've been practicing my magic. I learned how to heal injuries and how to cast a magic blast with rune magic. It took me about a year and a half to learn those two tricks, but I'm glad that you helped teach me when you used to be a member of the Royal Church of G. Responded Thanos, after revealing what she truly looks like under the hood. An average-sized young adult woman with mythic gray hair with emerald-colored eyes. Yeah. Those were the days until I decided to quit, so I could start my business selling stuff. I'm glad that I was chosen to be my successor as the Guardian Mage of G. Chan spoke as she remembered her past position. It was more my brother's idea of making me a successor. Speaking of the shop, how is business anyway? 
Fedos explained to her predecessor. I'm sorry that my brother has been raising taxes for security reasons. Fedos apologizes. I swear, he's just trying to run people out of business and cause problems for people. Also, I bet he's just doing this, just to get back at me for leaving. No offense, but you and your brother must have an easy time in life compared to most people. Shan complained. We ain't to do nothing seat on our asses type of nobility. My brother and I are very busy and do have the people's interest in heart, even if it seems like he makes questionable choices. Fedos explains to Shan about the tax increase. Well, if you say so, I still don't agree with the good number of policies. Shan snarkily said. Well, better head out. I'll be seeing you, Sean. Fedos said as she hugged her friend. I'll be seeing you, dear. Shan replied as she hugged her friend before she got back to work. Fedos then leaves Shan's shop before heading back to the capital building. Chapter 2 The Briefing Fedos hurriedly and makes it to the Capitol building. Once arrived, Fedos goes to the chamber where her brother shares some of the same features as his sister, such as similar height. He is sitting down with a six-foot-tall stranger who has black spiky hair resembling a slight tribal look. He also has shark-like features, like a tail and a fin on his back, and front and back teeth. Despite this, the stranger's appearance still mostly looks like a normal, good-looking human being. Fados, you're just on time, said the governor of Gita's sister, Fedos. Hey, glad I could make it, and who's that fellow over there? Fedos said as soon as she sat down in the dining chamber. Oh, him? He's Samuel Requiem and the leader of the Alcaria. We're about to start negotiations. The governor of G introduces Samuel. Sam is fine. No need to be formal, my friend. By the way, thanks for inviting me over, replied Sam Requiem. Wait, the king of Thieves and rule of the Sharks of Alkyria that Requiem? Asked Fedos. Yeah, that's me, all right. I'm guessing that you're the governor's little sister, Sam said while pointing at himself. Why, yeah, I am. So what is this whole thing about? Fedos asks her brother. For the king of thieves, he ain't bad looking to be fair. Fedos thought to herself in her head. As you know, the kingdom of Surakana has been going all around the island, taking over various territories and even planning to march through our lands to get Alkiria with their army to do so. So I decided to contact the Sam Requiem for help in defending our republic with his army. But he wanted some gold in return and for having him and his army be our bodyguards and on our side. Also, I don't plan to have my people fight in a two-way war. Explained the governor of G. But, brother, are we supposed to be a neutral country and not get involved in other countries' affairs? Fedos asks her brother. True, but it's better to have connections just in case. Plus, they are hired to be a deterrent. Also, I plan to go out and talk to King Kari of Surukano tomorrow alone with a group of my personal guards, so we can agree to a peace treaty. Besides, Sam and his men agreed to help keep the country guarded while I'm gone for one or two days and stand by just in case. Her brother responds to her worried sister. Are you sure I can't send anyone from my faction or let your sister come along? I mean, I don't trust those guys to play nice. Sam offered Fedos's brother. You and my sister will stay here in the city while I'm gone, and that is final, declared the governor of G. Wine, just make it back, okay? Begged Fedos full-heartedly to her brother in worry. Oh, come now, I promise I'll be fine. Just don't worry our heads about it too much, okay? Reassured Fedos' brother as he pats his sister's head caringly with a smile on his face. If you say so, Fedos responded while smiling softly. So when are we going to eat? I'm starving like hell. Interrupted Sam. And so Samuel Fedos and her brother had their feast after the briefing was brought to an end and dismissed. And that'll about do it for today's episode, guys. Hopefully you all enjoyed the story. Once again, if you were interested in this story, you can go and check out the full story by clicking the link down below. It'll take you to an Amazon link where you can read the entire book. And once again, if you guys are really into this and Harrison commissions me for more, we may just be bringing you guys more voice acted chapters in the future. So stay tuned for that. A big thanks to my co-voice actors, of course. 
Anyway, don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe so you never miss any videos to come in the future. And if by chance any of you happen to have stories or voice acting that you would like for me to do, there is a business email link on the About Me page at the end of the YouTube channel. I'll also leave my business email in the description below. Thanks again, guys, for all of your support, and I'll see all of you in the next exciting episode. Take care, everybody. See you next time.